have at it. Okay, can you hear me okay? Okay. All right, hey, uh, <clears throat> looking forward to, uh, obviously looking forward to, a. Um, this is an incredible time if you're a college basketball fan, player, coach. Uh, it's an incredible time of the year. It's a party that not everybody gets an invitation to, and uh, we recognize that. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for our guys that they get to play meaningful games here here in March, and uh, they, they've certainly earned the right. We were not sure on what our seating was going to be. We anticipated it probably would be uh, somewhere in that range. But, um, you know, for us to now, you know, be an NCAA tournament team five straight years, uh, when you include the COVID year, when we were going to be probably a five or a six seed, depending on how the Big Ten tournament went, went. You know, there's only been one, one other stretch since 1965 in Ohio State basketball history uh, that's been longer than that. And that was that was Thad went seven straight years. Um, so to be to be able to, to do it five, five straight years and also to be one of you know, three Big Ten teams um, to qualify five straight years is, um, you know, is something that I, I want our, our guys and our program to feel good about. And uh, we'll move quickly into our preparation for a Loyola team that's, um, you know, that's had a tremendous year and is really talented. All right, we'll go ahead and start with Adam Jardy and Clay Hall on deck. Adam. Chris, I just wonder if you could describe what the, the vibe and the mood was like uh, for the players uh, getting to see their name called and, and you know, after a, a couple, you know, two tough weeks uh, to, to see that up there. And like you said, to be a, a team that is playing meaningful games now, what did that moment feel like for your players? You know, I think sometimes, um, you know, players, especially here, because we've never not went here, so our guys, even a guy like Kyle, who's been here five years, you can you can kind of just take it for granted. And then you hear from guys from other programs and you realize that that's not the case. And it's not again, it's not been the case in our history of, at, at Ohio State here. So I think you try to emphasize that uh, I think their mood, uh, their mood is good. You know, there wasn't obviously some uh, there wasn't any real uh, concern as to getting in or not. Uh, so there wasn't too much drama with that, but uh, I think they they didn't even really have a. I don't know if they had an idea necessarily, you know, what kind of seed we were going to be. Uh, they just knew we were we were going to be in. All right, we'll go to Clay Hall and Colin Gay. Clay, hey uh, Chris, uh, just your reaction to the venue being closed so fans can be there, and does Friday help you in the injury sense? You know, I think it may, I'll, I'll answer your second question first. I think it may, another day, uh, Clay, for us is, uh, is, is certainly uh, needed. Um, and those guys are making progress, and I'll make more statements on that once I have more information. But uh, certainly if we were going to play in the first four tomorrow night, um, yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't look good uh, for, for our group. So they just need to continue to make progress. Um, as far as the venue, Love the fact that it's three hours from Columbus, or, or I believe that's uh, that's the case. So love the fact that it's close and close for our fans, and uh, we'd love to see them on Friday, whatever time we play. Thank you. All right, and we'll jump to one from Colin Gay and then Steve Howagen. Colin. Hey, Chris. Uh, you said before the Big Ten tournament how you wanted your guys to get better over the course of this past week and get healthier. I mean, do you feel like – you guys kind of hit that reality heading into this tournament or, or where do you guys kind of stand in, in those kind of two aspects, those two goals? Yeah, I, I think, you know, healthier and a little more rested for sure. Um, I think better will determine kind of our practices these next three days. Um, I think we'll, we'll have a better feel for that um, depending on the practice we have. We, you know, we went today, but we went relatively light um, and we won't do a whole lot tomorrow. Um, our guys will do some skill workouts, but I think that'll be determined the rest of this week. All right, and then we'll go Steve Hellwagon and Griffin Strong. Steve. Yeah, I know this is all fresh that you're playing Loyola, and uh, I don't know, just what, what are some of your overall thoughts uh, about that? And uh, sounds like the coach there, uh, Valentine, is one of the uh, up-and-comers, I guess, in the coaching profession. Just, I don't know, your thoughts on playing them and uh, maybe, you know, kind of what, uh, what his MO is, I guess, as a young head coach. 
Well, I, I don't know him uh, really well, but, but obviously uh, he's done a great job and their, their program. Um, you had Porter who just did a phenomenal job there. And, um, and obviously they've played in a final four. What was it? Four or five years ago. So they played in a final four and a sweet 16. And those guys that have been a part of that program, um, you know, were a part of those, you know, they, they were a part of those, of those games and certainly that coaching staff. So, you know, we've got tremendous respect for them uh, and their play and their league's really good. Uh, their league's a really good league. So, um, you know, I think everybody's well aware of Loyola and sister Jean from, from their final four run and um, uh, we're well aware of how good they are because they just beat the number one seed in our league last year um, in, in Illinois. So um, we'll dive more into them in the specifics, but they have a lot of players returning from teams that have had a tremendous amount of success. And I assume you keep all the talk just on this matchup. You don't talk a lot about, oh, we've got to save the season or anything like that. Just what, uh, what, what's kind of your, your message, I guess, to the guys that, you know, coming off a difficult little stretch here, I guess. Yeah, no, I think you just focus on, on the next one. I think, listen, you're not in this position if you didn't have really quality play and quality wins throughout the season. That's, you're not a seven seed without doing that. So um, that's, that's the reality. And I just, you know, I just shared the numbers of kind of where, um, it's not a given. It's, it's never been a given. Um, so you want our, your guys to appreciate that, but you're moving on to our guys knew, you know, they know from past experience from our first year playing a, a really good South Dakota state team. And then Gonzaga, our second year playing an Iowa state and a Houston team. And last year playing Oral Roberts, you're playing really good teams. Um, and we understand we're going to be playing a really good team. All right, we'll go Griffin Strom and then Rob Aller. Griffin. Coach, I'm just wondering how you approach kind of not letting the, the disappointing end, uh, you know, to, to the last few games here kind of bleed into the, the next challenge here. And do you sense a, maybe a new energy from the team, you know, now that you have the, the new challenge set here and, and a chance to kind of right some of those wrongs? Well, I mean, I think, again, the guys are excited about, about this opportunity and excited about um, kind of celebrating what they've been able to you know, the position they've been able to put themselves in. Certainly, we would have liked to have finished the season uh, better than what we did, um, uh, playing better and healthier, uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, this is obviously a new, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a new season. It is postseason. And uh, I think our guys are looking forward to the opportunity to compete um, on Friday. Right, we'll go Rob Aller and then Stephen Means. Rob. Hey, Chris, and giving a real quick look at Loyola. They don't look real big, but they look experienced with strong guard play. You know, that cliche is this kind. This time of season, guard play kind of dictates how you do. Do you buy into that? And if, if so, why is that so important? Just the ball's in their hands so much, Rob, and they dictate so much of, of the game uh, with, with um, guards in general. You know, it's harder to initiate offense with a big guy than it is a guard. Uh, so I think the, that adage is, is true and real. And for us, um, we are, we're aware of their guards, just again, because you've seen them on, on that stage for a number of years. So um, yeah, I, I think um, I, I've not had a chance to look at the roster uh, backwards and forwards, but I did watch last year their, uh, their tournament win over Illinois. I did, I did have a chance to watch that. So I'm familiar with some of their personnel. All right, and then we'll go our last three here. I want to get Coach out to get started on prep. We'll go Stephen Means, Bill Landis, and Adam King. Stephen. Chris, I know uh, Zed was game time decision before the Penn State game, and I don't even think Kyle was there with you guys. Um, I don't know, how close was Zed to maybe playing in that Penn State game? And it's like Kyle with the program still right now? Yeah, Kyle was in the back. Yeah, he was in the locker okay. room. Yeah, he okay. was in the locker room. So uh, sometimes just the noise and everything, and he just he just likes watching it. Uh, in the back. So we gave him that, you know, I, Zed, um, Zed could have played, uh, but he would not have been near full strength and uh, his ankle might've, it, it might've prevented him from, uh, from being able to play this week even. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it was a choice, you know, you make, um, you know, right or wrong. It just was kind of a choice we made with the medical staff that he was going to sit that one out. 
All right. And last two from Bill Landis and Adam King. Bill. Chris, you, you mentioned at the top there the, the five straight tournaments and kind of how that should never be taken for granted. Um, it's also – I don't think it's ever been this long that Ohio State hasn't advanced, you know, past the, the first weekend either. Um, and I know that's not all your tenure. Um, but I'm just kind of wondering how that frames your mind at all. And like you talked last year about taking that step forward and I'm not saying you need to guarantee a Sweet 16 berth or anything here, but just how does that kind of frame your mind as you go into this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think it's something you're always you're always aware of when, um, you know, you're – you know, I've obviously – um, my last year at Butler, we coached in a Sweet 16. It's an incredible experience to to be able to get through the first weekend and move on uh, to uh, to the next opponent. Uh, North Carolina beat us that that particular year. Um, I, I think, and they went on to win the, the national championship. I, I just think, all in all, um, you know, I, I think our really our focus is on kind of the nuts and bolts of trying to improve in those areas we have to improve in Bill and in. The rest of it, you know, will take care of itself. That's really our focus right now. We're not uh, necessarily talking about, you know, uh, anything other than that right now. And I don't know if this has been explicitly said anywhere. There's no chance justice plays, right? He is he he's done for the year. Yeah, no, I, I um, you know, I should probably go ahead and um and and you know, we should probably go ahead and put a statement out. But I'll just leave it at we do we do not anticipate him playing on Friday. So, all right, we'll go with Adam King. Adam. I can, if there's a couple more, I can maybe do a couple more. Here. All right, we'll get Adam King and Doug Lee's Marie then. Adam. Um, Coach, obviously last year you guys are a two seed. Uh, things don't go the right way in the first round. Is there a different mindset coming in as a seven seed, as a lower seed? And is there a mindset after coming off that, that anything can't happen in the tournament and, you know, just go and do your job, seeing what happened last year? Yeah, no, I think that's a realization that uh, kids understand if they've been a part of a game like that where they've, you know, they've been a part of an upset, whether it's in the regular season or in the postseason, you realize how quickly uh, something like that can, uh, your season can be over. You also realize how good uh, other teams are that you may not be familiar with, you may not see on a regular basis. Uh, they're older, typically, as was that team. Uh, they've typically played for a number of years together, typically. Uh, as that team was, as as the Loyola team we're playing now, older, experienced guys that have played together uh, for a number of years. So, um, you know, hopefully that helps inform our guys in terms of what to expect uh, even more. Um, but uh, I know our guys have great, you know, they have great appreciation and respect for everybody that's in this in this tournament. It's just unique because we haven't, you know, we haven't had a ton of guys on our roster that have uh, that have played because of the COVID year. Um, um, when uh, obviously we would have been in it, but it's, you know, I think that experience is helpful. Is there any part of you that talks to the guys about the fact that while well, you don't have a two or a one or a three next to your name, anything can happen here? Well, we've had those conversations. You know, we had those, you know, we owned last year. We had those conversations uh, during the summer. We talked about it. Um, I think our guys, um, you know, they, they've talked plenty. I think that's the reality. It's not like it's not like you you you, you know. There's going to be plenty of upsets. Um, we know that. That's that's March Madness. It's 40 minutes. There's going to be plenty of them. Um, and uh, you know what we can control is what our preparation, our focus is heading into Friday. We'll go Doug Lee's Maurice, and we'll get one more with Brendan Gulick uh, there to finish up. Doug. Hey Chris, I, I know you've talked about this, but again, the idea that. All five years for you, you've had five NCAA tournament teams here. Feels like you get in and then immediately you get to prep and we get to like what's going to happen next. But if you could just expand on that, like how much of a threshold is this? 350 teams want to be in, 68 are in. How much of a threshold is making the tournament year after year for a coach, for a program? But what really is the context of that? Yeah, it's it's um, it's a really good question. I think it's it's a benchmark for uh, for every program, whether you're a, a smaller school, a mid-major or a high major. And certainly, um, uh, you know, for us uh, and for many other programs, you know, you're, you're working really hard to advance. You know, it's, it's not like there's, a, there's an appreciation for how hard it is. You know, when I, when I shared those numbers, to be honest with you, I was surprised that there were only three Big Ten teams that, that had went for five years or would have went for five years. I just assumed 
you know, Purdue would have been in that group, but Purdue wasn't going to go the COVID year unless they won the Big Ten tournament. I just assumed that Wisconsin would have been in that group, but Wisconsin didn't go, I think, our first year. So there's assumptions, I think, that, that are made. And you can, you can rightfully assume, I mean, Tom's, I don't think, went, he's went every year in the last 25 years. Um, but I, you know, so there's an appreciation for that. And then obviously a real hunger, um, you know, to advance and, and to, um, to play well. And I think that's, that's the challenge. But every coach will tell you he wants to, he wants to get in this, this big party that you only get an invitation to or you earn the right to through your conference tournament. And, you know, I've had our guys share, you know, they have come from other schools, you know, share experiences of what it's like to either be on spring break on Selection Sunday or back home with your family on Selection Sunday or just, you know, you kind of avoid it because you know it's out there and you got buddies who are playing in it, but you're not going to be in it. It's, it can be a miserable experience for kids. And, uh, you know, we've had a difficult stretch, so we wanted to enjoy this moment and then move to, to working towards Loyola. All right, and then we'll finish up with Brennan Gulick. Brennan. Coach, thanks for taking some time with us. Just want to ask you about the, the strength of schedule you guys have had this year. You, know, you told us a lot at the beginning of the year that um, you thought you put together maybe the hardest schedule that you guys had ever put together, you know, during your tenure here. I'm just wondering if you think about, you know, where the team is today, the opportunities officially here, you're playing in March Madness, you know what you get in the league every year, but how much gratitude um, you know, do you have or does the team express to each other about, hey, you know, we played Duke already. We played some of these teams that, you know, we really expected were going to push us to get to get ready for moments like this. You know, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, our guys, they know that they played a, a challenging league schedule and a challenging non-conference schedule. And then we do that every year for a reason. And to be honest with you, I may change my philosophy. I mean, I, I don't know. I look at some of the metrics behind some of these some of these things and, and wins really do matter. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to look at that in the off season, but um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, we, we did try to challenge ourselves, and um, uh, we took a couple on the chin there in the non-conference and, and certainly at the end of the, the conference season, but um, you know, that doesn't necessarily, that, that guarantees you that I think you're, you're weathered a little bit as a group and, um, but it doesn't guarantee you anything because we know, again, we're playing uh, a, a really good team uh, on Friday. So I think it, it helps that you've been tested. I think it does weather you some. Um, and uh, but you got to play well, you know, on opening night. All right. Coach, thank you. Appreciate it. OK, guys, thank you.